going on guys so today's sunday we're going to do a vlog uh, review on edgar's car this is edgar what's up guys so How you doing? this is his car um we're going to check it out we're going to do the driveway test um <laughs> as you guys can see uh this is a custom bumper he was a little nervous when i told him that uh he, he should. You guys didn't see his reaction in his face, <laughs> but uh, he thought we were gonna do the review where it's parked. Uh, and I told him, you know, on our vlogs we do the drive test. So he's gonna park it in the middle, and uh, let's see what he what he let's what he can do. It's <laughs> oh, hitting a little bit. It's hitting. I start over. I'll probably go that way. All right, guys, so he made it. That was pretty close. That's pretty good, Edgar. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go over it. It's kind of a, it's a mix. You could say like a VIP, uh, you know, it's not like as big as the older Lexus, right? Yeah. So it's a, it's a shorter, sportier Lexus that um, that uh, he's made almost into a v, VIP uh, style. It's his own style. It's classy, but it's sporty. It's pretty cool. I think you guys are going to like the vlog. Um, it's different. You don't see a lot of this in Reno, so it's unique. Well, let's go over the wheels. Uh, what kind of wheels are these, Edgar? So honestly, these wheels, my man, I can't really pronounce them. <laughs> they're called Out Hand wheels or something. They're a new wheel brand that came out, and I just thought they looked cool, so I got them. Um, they're 19 inch, 19 by nine and a half. Uh, I got the cheapest tires I could possibly find on Amazon, because you know, it's broke. Just kidding. <laughs> so as I can see, the name of the tires it says Achilles or something. Yeah, see, I don't even know the brand, but I know the price is 67 bucks a tire, so. Damn. <laughs> I had to hop on that deal. Yeah, the only thing is uh, I want to go cheaper because, uh, I mean, the car's kind of cambered in a way, so I don't want to go through tires and expensive tires. Nah, let's go cheap. That's my, that's how I see it. But that makes sense. I mean, if, if your car's gonna wear out the tires a lot, guys, don't go get the fanciest things out there. You don't need fancy tires. It's not, a, and it's not a race car like he said. He's not going for speed. He's going for style. Um, so the, the wheels, are they come that color? You bought them that color? No, I bought them all chrome. They came with the gold rivets, but I actually painted these uh, like a gold copper almost. Um, they're just a, just a, off a of spray can, honestly. Yeah. That, that's hella good, actually. That, that's really nice for, for being spray painted uh, with the spray can. Um, but what spray paint did you buy? To do uh, it was a dupli color. It was called copper. Um, Something copper, I forget, but it's copper, dupli color. Very careful with it. I didn't, okay, so on the process, let me tell you how I did that. I didn't, I didn't sand it and scuff it because that takes away the chrome. You need the chrome effect behind the, or to support the copper because it would bring it out more. Um, but yeah, no, I just literally cleaned it with like alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and just clean it, make sure everything's nice and, nice and clean, and just uh, masked off everything that I didn't want painted and then just sprayed it. But you spray it in a very special way. And not many people do because most people just, you know, just lay it on there. Uh, but this one, you do little coats. Like, it probably took me like 45 minutes a wheel to like actually do. Like, just little coats here and there. Once it starts to build up, then you can do heavier coats. Nice. You know? So there you go, guys. If you guys want to spray paint chrome, uh, it, has, it hasn't peeled or anything? Mm, no, just little rock chips here and there on some wheels, but nothing crazy. So you didn't sand it? All you did is rubbing alcohol? Just rubbing alcohol, clean it, painted it. It still lasted. I mean, it's been on here for like... I don't know how long anymore, like five months or something. Still holding strong. That's pretty Three. solid. Yeah, pretty good. Well, cool. So the wheels are, are they different sized tires in the front and the back or are they the same? Uh, they're all the same. I wanted the rotation thing, you know? So I don't want to like buy tires instead of like, I could just rotate them, you know? And this car's yeah. two wheel drive? Yeah, rear wheel. So these cars are rear wheel drive? Well, this one specifically, yeah. So what, um, so we, so we know, right, um, I don't remember if I asked you. So what model uh, Lexus is this? This one's a uh, Lexus IS250. It's a 2007. Um, this, this is actually one of the rare ones. This is a manual, a six-speed manual. So there you go, guys. So, yeah, and he's right, because most of the ones that I've seen are usually automatic. They have like, mm -hmm. this one has the paddle shifters too, or? No, that's actually just for sure. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I was wondering, I was like, whoa, whoa, yeah, exactly. whoa, like what's going on there? Yeah, no, that's often automatic. That's often ISF. All right, I got, I got you. Yeah. So that, that's, so it confuses people, because how can you have paddles and manual transmission? Yeah, people have asked me multiple times. But I think that's pretty cool that it's manual. <laughs> yeah, it's there, really cool. I like it a lot. So you got the visors? Uh, it looks like you wrap, right? Mm -hmm. So you, uh, so you guys know if you guys need a, you know, I guess I'm gonna shout out here for him. Um, he does wrap cars. Uh, he does from little parts, from visors. This chrome right here. Um, 
this whole car is wrapped if you guys haven't noticed this is not a paint job by the way so um yeah so let's see so he wrapped this right here he has the visors um uh, what's up with the curtains what's what's so the curtains are more to bring out like a more a vip style kind of thing more classy more elegant kind of look you know um i don't know i think it just kind of flowed with the car so i just kind of went with it um i'm gonna upgrade a lot of the stuff later but for now i mean it looks really good i like it you know fits my style i guess so this is the daily driver too guys so it's not going to be perfect um he does have a, what do you have you have like a, a honda at home what, what kind of honda so i have a honda civic i'm converting a lot of this stuff to like to my to my likes pretty much uh oh that's, that's my brother right there's, there. there's trouble <laughs> about the family yeah <laughs> so my little honda i have a project i mean that's gonna turn into like a thirty thousand dollar project honestly it's crazy but it's in the paint shop right now uh, it's getting all this body work done so i'm going bigger motor turbo all-wheel drive but that one's not gonna be my race car it's gonna be like more of a show car and that acura is that a, a chameleon that one it's a it, it looks like chameleon it, yeah they call it color flip yeah um what's up puppy it's my dog what is it <laughs> what's up puppy but what's your name again kevin kevin i'm david <laughs> nice to meet you yeah no this paint this uh this wrap is badass and you did the wrap right oh, yeah. so Chameleon, look at that. That shit. My brother, dude, this is his favorite color. Really? He's gonna be like, dude, the chameleon, dude. That's what you should do to your car. No, no, not. So his brother just pulled up. You guys just met his brother. He has a chameleon uh, Acura. Uh, what kind of Acura is that? Just Acura TL. TL, right? That's what I thought. I'm, ba I'm not good with my Acuras and my Lexus. So, uh, well, cool. The, the side here looks pretty good. Um, it looks like you have a side skirt, too. I made that. You made that side skirt? <laughs> yeah. So it looks pretty clean though. Yeah, not too bad. And it's wrapped too? Yeah, I just wrapped it over. Nice. Yeah. So same size wheels. Uh, so you guys know um, the size of the tires are 215, 35, 19s. They don't, they don't look that big on the car actually. It, goes, it looks very clean. Yeah, it tires. talks pretty well. You couldn't tell they're 19s in my opinion. So the, the car is wrapped as he was saying. Uh, he does wrap cars. Um, you got the curtains. Let's see, you got the, you got the roof is ca uh, carbon fiber wrapped, right? Yeah. I don't recommend this. <laughs> it scales a lot. How come? Uh, it's just a cheaper brand, and it's like also because also it's a this carbon fiber how it gives like a 3D effect, like more gloss and stuff. Um, it's actually a lot thicker than normal vinyl, so after a while when it heats up and stuff, it'll start cracking and things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's thicker, and then also you see lifts and stuff. It's kind of weird. You um, see what? A lot of lifting. Oh, like yeah. uh, random places and stuff. Yeah. So it cracked, and I patched it on the back and stuff like that. But I'm not, I'm not gonna run this anymore. I'm gonna redo the whole room. So it's just hard to maintain it. Yeah, I, I would recommend it for like interior stuff. Uh, hold up. Not for outside? Not for outside. Well, no, cool. Outside. So that, there's the side of the car. Um, so he is he is wrapping. How many cars have you wrapped before you wrapped this car? This one was my first one. So so oh, this is the first, you've messed, if you messed up, you messed up on your car, right? Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of imperfections on the car and I'm gonna redo the whole car now because I got more experience out of it. I think total now I wrapped four or five cars on my car. How long does it take you? A uh, long time actually, because the, the process, I, how I do it is I, I take the whole car completely apart, door panels, bumpers, all these plastic trim and everything, just get it down to just skin that I need. And then uh, clean it. A lot of it, it was actually spent time in cleaning too. So I think in general, like on this one, I think, because I was learning, I spent like 60 hours doing it. 60 hours, um, it's a whole, a whole uh, work week, more than a work week. Yeah, and that's after my full-time job. You know? That sucks. But, I mean, well, it cool. it sucks, but it's worth it, I guess. Yeah, I mean, the outcome, it looks nice. Well, you, it's your first time, right? So. Yeah, so this one took me a little longer. I think on my brother's, that one was actually pretty hard, too. I spent like 50 hours on it or something. So yeah. pretty time-consuming, too? Oh, yeah. How but, much uh, uh, How much did you charge your brother to do it? I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> Still deciding. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so let's move on to the back. So on the back, I see you have some uh, aftermarket uh, exhaust uh, tips. So what yeah, kind of exhaust is that? Actually, it's OEM. Oh, it's the original exhaust? It's not original to the car, but it's OEM uh, upgrade. So it's an a F-Sport, pretty much. So, uh, sport line, I guess. Well, like Subaru makes SPTs. Uh, it's, uh, it's performance, okay. but it's something made by Subaru. So it's kind of kind of the same thing, just F-Type exhaust. Kind of, the, kind of the same thing, like, you know how like brands have like their own like performance so, uh, line kind of thing. So it is technically considered aftermarket, but it's made by the OE manufacturer. I guess so. Yeah, if, you, if you describe it like that, yeah. How many? Uh, how big is it? Like, uh, not too sure. I just put it up. Like two inches, <laughs> maybe three. Inches? I, maybe a uh, two and a half. I think. Yeah. It kind of seemed like it was a little thicker. It was thicker for sure than the stock brand or stock size. And then, uh, as far as uh, La Rossi, why is it La Rossi? 
Honestly, I just wanted to give it a name. I mean, I thought, I thought it would be kind of cool in a way. Now, you know, like I don't know. I, like, I wanted something that would kind of flow with the car, like something more. Like so, I gave it the name. I was gonna say Rosie, but I'm like, nah. I wanted to give it more, more little, little pizzazz, you know. So I put La in front of it. Now people pronounce it with La Rosie. They give that that roll of the R, you know. So, That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, very nice. Um, is this a uh, the this right here, like the wing or whatever you want to call it? Is that a is that a factory or? No, this is totally aftermarket for <laughs> sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just uh, I don't remember where I bought it from. I think Amazon or something. Yeah. So aftermarket, um, so these come with, uh, do they come with a wing from the factory or no? Yeah, some of them do, some of them don't. This but model, this model does it come with one or no? Yeah, this one didn't come with it, but yeah, it's like, it's kind of like a, like a feature you choose, like an option, a like factory option. Like when you buy the car, hey, do you want this feature added to this kind of thing? Like, yeah, you can add the little wing. You know, so it's, it's a little tiny one, OEM oh, yeah, is really tiny for it. So like, kind of like a, just a trunk clip. Pretty much. Almost like the WRX, I think. Yeah. So, um, let's check out the trunk. Let's see the, the space. Uh, you don't want to see the space. No, no, we do. We There's want to see the trunk. There's a bunch of stuff in there. We right want now. to see the trunk, right, guys? I mean, <laughs> everybody gets to open their trunk. Nah, uh, that's nasty. It's not. What he's trying to say, guys, is he lives in his trunk. Yeah. No, I'm just <laughs> There's a bunch of stuff in here. I'm always back and forth. I got tools in here and so, uh, work clothes. So, as you guys can see, the original color of the car is silver. Yeah. So, um, and then he, he does do um, side work, right? A lot of side work on cars. Yeah, that's kind of where I live off of. So that's good. <laughs> so if you guys need any work, this is a guy. What what do you know how to do? Uh, a lot of everything, because I'm, I'm actually a tech at Lexus. And I mean, I do motor work, transmission, uh, just down to even your basic services, oil changes and stuff like that. I've done a lot of electrical too, so yeah. So there you go, guys. There you go. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, beautiful trunk. <laughs> and what you're talking about, there are roomy trunks, so you guys know. Yeah, there's you can a lot see of the stuff back. I live you can in see here. The back. <laughs> <laughs> so we, you do have a... There's actually real carbon fiber on this, right? Yeah. So how, um, was that easy to install or? No, it's uh, when we got it, I tried to put it on. The thing is that um, it's kind of warped, so it doesn't fit right. But what I did, I just kind of like laid a layer of Bondo on one side and tried to even it out. And I just stuck it on eventually. Yeah. But it works, I mean. What, uh, what brand is it? Um, not sure. Uh -huh. it's probably Amazon brand, something from Amazon. Fuck it, fuck it, it works. So, yeah. the side of the car on this side, guys, you can see it looks very clean as the other side. Uh, we did save the best uh, for last as far as the outside. If you guys look at the outside, we're gonna move to the front now. Uh, this is a custom made front end. So, what can you tell me about the front end? Uh, let's start off by how, why I did it in general. So pretty much my car had the 07 body style. I don't know if you probably bring up a picture later on. But I mean, um, pretty much what, when I got the car, uh, like I gotta say like two months later, like the clutch went out and I, I ghetto towed it. And right here, this little block, you can kind of take it out and you can put a tow hook in it and just tow a car like that. So I kind of ghetto towed it with another friend's car. And uh, we turned, we turned a, we did a turn and it turns out the rope kind of caught underneath the wheel, ripped half the bumper off That's of beautiful. it. So, <laughs> So that was kind of cool and I was like, all right, well, I got to get a new bumper now. And I was like, you know what? Might as well do something different. And so I was like, I want to put one of those 2015 front ends on it. And this was like a little while back. And I really liked that front end. So I was like, all right, let me try to do that. So it turns out I've been looking into it. Not many people have done it, but what I've seen is people actually cut bumpers and glue them together. There's actually two bumpers cut and plastic welded together, all the bodywork, fiberglass bondo, all that. So I put it together from the best of my knowledge, you know. And it turned out pretty good, not too bad. I had it painted after, and then eventually I wanted to wrap the whole car. So, yeah, I mean, it's not perfect, but I mean, it did cost me a pretty penny. This is all OEM parts. So, I mean, like, you see a little bottom cracking and stuff here, but it doesn't bother me. I made the bumper and I'm happy with it, you know? So, um, so are these the uh, original headlights? Actually, they're not. These are off of 2011. Um, they're not plug and play. These, uh, these headlights are not plug and play, so I, I had to repin a couple wiring cuts, cut and splice and stuff like that. I used wiring diagrams and stuff um, in order to get the LED to work. But uh, they're a lot nicer compared to the ones I had. Also, the taillights are off of 2011 as well. Uh, oh, so then this look? Oh, I, I made this look too. Yeah. It's like it's like a lot of Home Depot stuff, you know, Lowe's. And there, stuff. there you go. You know, I mean, it looks cool. <laughs> building, building this car on a budget, kind of, right? Because no you're, he's saying he spent two grand on this bumper. Yeah. And that's with the Home Depot lift <laughs> that he made, which looks very clean. You couldn't tell. Uh, believe it or not, guys, he won a trophy at a, a Street to Track uh, maybe like three weeks ago. 
top 20? Uh, top 20 at a street to track. Yeah. Um, and this is just him uh, putting in the work. It's just, mm -hmm. so what that tells you guys is that you can, um, you can, you can create something, you know, out of nothing. You just gotta use your mind and, and uh, just, you take know, your time. take your time to, to make something, right? Yeah. So, um, wh why'd you like this color so much? You know, there's so many wraps, like you said, you wrapped your brother's car mm -hmm. on that chameleon. Um, what, why'd you choose this color? So basically I had a couple of choices. I wanted to do like a red, dark red, something like that, something a little different. Cause I mean, I've seen the colors that Lexus has and like I like a lot of those colors and I was like, dang, well I wanna try to do something like that. But a lot of the ones that I wanted weren't available. So I was like, you know, I would just buy a or get a bunch of random samples. And I like this one, it stuck out when I put it to the sun, it kind of sparkled and stuff like that. It was just like more classy and I was like, well I don't want to stand out too much, but I want something that's like, has a nice flow to it, you know? And if you guys look at it on the sun right now, the sun's in it pretty nice. Um, it's it's really nice. It's dark at some angles, but then it's very bright on some other angles. Uh, one of the things he was telling me off camera, I don't believe I recorded this. Uh, uh, you know, when you wrap a car, it's more maintenance to uh, to take care of it. You have to kind of polish it every now and then. There's a uh, what do you do to take care of it for people that want wraps? So honestly, for me on my car, I just I just do a lot of I, I wash it very very often. Um, if it rains, like you know how like you get all the the dirt smudging and stuff, I wash it constantly. I try not to use a, a scrub for like soap or anything. I use a spray bottle with degreaser. I just hit it real quick and just spray it off. And then I, I spray it off a lot longer than normal car washes. You know, I just keep going with it. And then um, just wipe it down really nice and clean. And just, I don't know, just put a quick detailer on it real quick because you don't want. Because I mean, uh, for some reason, I'm thinking I'm not sure if it's true, but I've seen it's like very staticky and attracts a lot of dust. Um, no matter what color you choose from, I've seen that. So what I use is that quick detailer, like the wax or something, and it doesn't stick as well anymore, like all the dust and stuff. So you know, that's kind of how I do it. And um, I just try to keep it clean always, you know? Nice. Yeah. Good stuff. So um, let's, check out the, uh, let's check out the engine before we check out the inside. Um, my, my car's eye is 250, so it's 2.5 liter. I got this off a of 3.5 liter. I just kind of threw it on there. So what size engine do you have? 2.5. Okay, 2.5, so that's a yeah. 4 cylinder, right? That's a 6. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's still a V6. What, what is it? It's still a V6. 2.5? 2.5. 2.5 V6? Yeah. 2.5 V6. <laughs> I guess, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know these cars too much as you can tell. Yeah. 2.5 for me, for me, it's like, that car's a 2.3, I think, or whatever it is, I forget oh, what it is. It's like, that's a 4 cylinder. Yeah. Um, the GTR is a 3.8. Uh, the Trailblazer is like a 4 point something, so. That's crazy. It's yeah. a very small leader very small. Actually, they use the same uh, same kind of block. They just uh, bore it out and stuff, and they make it into a 350, which is a 3.5. So they use the same engine, pretty much. Same block and stuff like that. They just bore it out. Yeah. So. The, the wrap right there, guys, is not going to be the best of qualities. The material that it is, it's not, very, it's not a smooth surface. So as you guys can see, he had extra wrap from that car that he did. Uh, and this is what he had left. With the texture, it has a texture to it. So... But anyway, um, out a little more. he was just messing around, trying it out, see if it would hold yeah. uh, with the extra wrap that he had. And uh, so now he knows. Uh, so what do you plan on doing? Are you going to change it or what are you going to do? Yeah, I'm going to change the whole car, to be honest. And this is actually one of the things I'm going to touch up. Probably hydro dip it. Some, probably, I mean, it might be the same color. I mean, it looks kind of cool. But, yeah. Yeah. So Chameleon, yeah. nice. So there's the outside. There's the custom bumper. Um, the outside, I mean, pretty solid. Um, the roof, you guys heard, um, coming from a guy that wraps cars, um, you know, not the best of materials, doesn't recommend them for the outside. Uh, for the inside, yes, good idea. Great idea on the uh, on the uh, hood supports. That was pretty pretty cool. And oh, the calipers, look, I just realized that these cars have pretty uh, decent side calipers. So oh, yeah, that's an upgrade. That's an off uh, IS350 as well. So did you upgrade those calipers? Yeah, I upgraded that, big brakes. Front and back or? Uh, just the fronts for now, I have to do the rear soon. So these, are so these are off of the 350, right? Yeah, yeah it's 350. So, you know, me, me myself, I'm not very familiar with the uh, with these Lexus numbers, right? I'm a, I'm a car guy that just knows like, like okay, Dodge Neon SRT4, SRT8 means like your your Jeep, right? Mm -hmm. So can you explain to us the uh, the numbers, why, why the certain numbers go a certain way on the Lexus? Yeah, so pretty much on your Lexus, when you look at the numbers, like let's say you see, you see IS200, that's a 2.0, I should believe on that one. Um, you see IS250, it's a 2.5 liter, IS350, 3.5 liter. Uh, there's some that just don't make sense, like RX400, it's not a 4.0, it's, uh, it's just the name they gave it. Or, so what is it? Uh, it's a hybrid. 
So not all the numbers are going to make sense, but yeah. for the most part, um, 252.0, 200, 2, 2.0. What about the IS300, like the older one? What is that? Yeah, that's a 3.0. So that actually yeah. still works. That one actually has a 2JZ in it. Uh, uh, yeah. no, that, I, like, I heard that those cars yeah. are pretty badass. Um, pretty cool. So that's kind of what started these cars, I would say. It's an older model of it. Um, there you guys go. I mean, if you guys didn't know the numbers or understand them like me. All right, guys, so we're going to check out the inside. As you guys can see, um, obviously, as we, you know, we keep saying, uh, the car is silver uh, underneath. The car does have a leather interior. He keeps his floor mats wrapped. It's pretty <laughs> nice and spacious. Uh, this car is manual, which is, you know, like he said, not very common. And me personally, too, I don't see a lot of manual ones. Um, the paddle shifters that you guys see before you guys point them out are just for show. They're not really, they don't do anything. Nope. So, so <laughs> before you guys ask, no, you cannot have uh, paddle shifters with a manual transmission. It just doesn't work. Um, the seat's see a little the, le elevated too. Yeah, can we bring it up? Yeah, 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 can we back? Is this because I, I put it up for the dog? So, so oops. <laughs> he he he, he chiqueado su perrito. <laughs> he 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 spoils his little dog here. That's his dog, so you guys know. <laughs> he has a bodyguard with it too that brings him along in the chameleon uh, Acura. Uh, so, <laughs> <he's> <laughs> 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 so for a lot of people out there that don't know these cars very much, Edgar, um, uh, I'm gonna tell you guys one thing. You know, like this air freshener. As soon as I got here. The car smells really good, so um, definitely I would recommend the air freshener alone. It's pretty cool. It's, it smells, <laughs> I mean, as soon as you get in this car, it just gives it a unique smell. Uh, so you guys can see the uh, the brand. I guess we're we're kind of giving somebody credit for the air freshener. It's hybrid racing. Hybrid racing. Yeah. Uh, awesome sauce. Yeah. And it does really smell awesome. So for a lot of the people out there that don't know Lexus very much or have not been a, you know inside one of these cars, I like these cars. Um, what, do, what, what are the key points that you like um, as far as the inside? What I really like about it is that keyless feature. So I don't, I don't even have to have the key, like I don't have to struggle finding the key or anything like that, putting it in. Let's say I'm trying like, oh, where's the keyhole? Nah, you just have the thing and it'll turn on. Which is super cool, you know, and I, like, check this out. I keep the key fob in my pocket because it's all, all you need to carry, you know? That's all really whatever you need, and all you need. Whoa, 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 the key. He didn't show you guys something. Now the key, I think, is broken. The no, key fob? It's not broken. Is it? No, that's You're just missing for the, the key. The key itself. So do you have it? Okay. Yeah. Because he, if you guys didn't notice, uh, he wrapped it. Oh. <laughs> so he wrapped that too. See, he's skipping things here. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> so this is the this is the color of the car. I wrapped it. I was bored at work. There was you nothing see, to do. There's nothing to do. So what does this guy do when he's bored? He wraps stuff. <laughs> so watch out, guys. Uh, <laughs> If he's around your car, who knows? You might just start wrapping it. So he wrapped the. No the, promises. Though. Exactly. He uh, he wrapped the key fob. And uh, here's the actual key. So if like if you have a dead battery or something, you can still get into your car. I mean, some people are probably like, "Hey, how does this work?" And you got a dead battery. Well, that's how you know. This actually opens the door and stuff. But uh, the there's a cover for the for the for the on the handle. There's a cover, so it covers the keyhole, so you don't even really see it. But anyways, this goes right in here. And that, I think that's pretty cool for the Lexus brand. I mean, like, you can just take it off and just put this in your pocket. You don't have to worry about all this. Oh, look at this little tip that I put. You always lose a 10, right? Yep. I put a little midget size 10 millimeter here. There you go, guys. I'm on my keychain. <laughs> on my keys. That's, that's a good idea. So if, yeah. you ever, if you ever lose a 10, guys, uh, just put it as a key. Yeah. Con consider a key if you want an import. <laughs> even, even most American cars, actually, nowadays. Yeah, pretty much, huh? So I just keep this in my pocket. So. I mean, you don't even have to, you can be outside of the car and it'll still kind of turn on as long as it reads it. Uh, that's pretty cool. So I just thought, and this one, you have to do the, the feature. You have to push in the clutch all the way down. And then you see a green light turn on and you just click it. Turns right on, make sure you're in neutral. Sounds nice. Yeah. So clutch goes in, push the, do you have to push the brake or not? No, nothing. Because I mean, uh, on automatics, you push the brake. No, but on so then manual, clutch. Clutch. Clutch only. Yeah. Pretty cool. Nice, low, low miles, 80,000 miles? Uh, no, that's actually high Oh, mileage. that's trip, huh? That's trip. Yeah. High mileage, 170. 170. On the body, I rebuilt the whole uh, engine on my, out of my work. What, did anything happen to it or? No, I just like, there's this kind of a, like a TSB kind of thing, like technical service bulletin or something. Uh, it says if you get the specific engine code, um, they would just recommend rebuilding the, uh, the whole engine. Which is kind of cool. Is this for like, the valves get built up with lots of carbon and it throws a misfire, like a random misfire? So. Yeah, I kind of like, honestly, I kind of ran the car like crap on purpose just to get it. Just, just to, to get it approved. I got paid to rebuild my engine, which is pretty cool. Pretty awesome. Yeah. It has like about 30,000, I would say now, on the rebuild. Still holding strong, nothing leaking, everything running right. Pretty cool. Cool, there you go. Toyota's for you, right? Yeah. A Lexus is a Toyota, if you don't know, guys. Hey, Lexus is a Toyota. Just it's more luxury. So is Scion. Yeah, it's like a, if you guys don't know out there, for you younger uh, kids or generations, um, 
uh, for people that just don't know in general, uh, uh, GMC, for example, is a uh, Tahoe. Um, so Chevy. Chevy, General Motors. So um, Toyota. What is Toyota? Toyota owns uh, Scion. When uh, Scion, they stopped making Scions, mm -hmm. right? They own Lexus. Do they own anything else? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I think that's kind of it. They use the same engines and same kind of technology. Cool. So, pretty cool. Nice. Well, that, that is pretty nice, guys. I, I do like the push start. I do have that on one of my cars, and uh, it is very handy, like you said. Um, cool. So, um, for a lot of those younger generations, I don't know if you guys know what this is. Uh, <laughs> This right here is, a, I believe they call it a CD player, correct? A CD, something. I never, CD, I never, never like, used it. <laughs> like, like it, it slides in and yeah. it can get scratched and um, yeah. I tried so, to put my phone in there once. It like, a, like it's not a phone ho holder, right? Yeah, don't get confused, so, guys. So for those younger <laughs> generations, a, a CD, CDs. Yeah, you'd have to change the CD to put the song that you wanted and change the songs. And sometimes if you're not careful enough, you would scratch the shit out of the, sh the CD and your track would spin or, or, or skip. skip your track would skip Stutter. at the at the worst time <laughs> you'd be next to like a good looking girl at a stoplight and click 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 oh shit <laughs> change it so yeah for those people out there that don't know on the <laughs> cds yeah is, is this, that's, that's the struggle that was a huge oh, huge upgrade from um from the uh cassettes <laughs> can't relate to that struggle. Exactly. <laughs> no, I can't. No? I can't. Oh, he's 23. I'm sorry. I'm 23. I do. <laughs> he's, th he's 23. I'm, I'm older than him by uh, 10 years. I can still relate. <laughs> so, but anyway, so CD player, um, what else does, uh, does it have? Okay, so this one, considering it's a manual, uh, this is a special edition, or I mean a special order. Um, but these manuals only came as like super base model to Lexus. It still has a lot of cool features that not many not many cars have but it's like kind of like a kind of like a baseline for lexus um so i mean i mean this keyless you know remote start kind of thing or not remote start but like the push start um uh, that's that's pretty cool not many cars have that but i mean the, my car doesn't have the gps navigate uh, the navigation thing the backup camera and stuff like that um which is, you know it sucks but i'll do that upgrade later i mean it's not a big deal but i'm um then it doesn't have like heated or ac seats or anything vented seats or stuff like that but I mean, like overall, it's pretty cool. Um, what other kind of features does it have? Um, oh, there's a cool feature when you when you lock the doors and you go up to the car. You have your key fob and you can open it without actually clicking the buttons or anything. It just open by itself. Nice, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. What's this? Uh, that's just to control the sunroof or moonroof or whatever. So yeah. Nothing crazy. The buttons are up here. Does it work or no? Yeah, it works all the way. You, you can pick how far you want to go in. So pretty go quick, up. pretty nice. Yeah, so I mean, you open it more, it goes more. So I almost I thought it was like a like a heater controller. It's oh. like auto, <laughs> auto, and like what? Yeah. So if you click auto, I think if you just push it or just go by itself or something. Push it in or? Oh, I think it's kind of like. This. Oh okay. Yeah. So have it flat. Oh okay. And then bam. Oh, so did you push it right? Yeah, I just literally click it. So you click it and it closes too. Mm -hmm. Nice. Not bad. This is a, a six-speed transmission. Uh, reverses to your left, right? So that's correct? Yeah, just like where first is pretty much. I mean, just like push this up and you go into reverse. Nice. reverse. Nice. Yeah. Messing cool. up over here. Um, <laughs> what, the, what's going on with the back? Why, why so romantic? Nah, it's just uh, more classy, you know, more uh, more elegant kind of thing. Like, I mean, imagine this thing in an Uber and you pop in and you're just like, hey, this guy's got a wine bottle. <laughs> I mean, I don't have the bottle with me. I have it in the trunk. I don't want to bring that out yet. <laughs> David would probably like me a little more. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> what so did you make this? Or yeah, what? I made this table. I mean, because, I mean, the tables are really expensive. I mean, I just bought wood from Home Depot and a lot of, like, stuff. And I just gathered together and just kind of made it kind of like VIP tray, you know? But I've seen them going for, like, 400, 500 bucks. It's like, I'm not in the market for that. So I just made it my own. <laughs> I spent, like, $50 making this thing. That's yeah. pretty handy. So this yeah. guy's is... Uh... Uh, uh, arts and crafts. Arts and crafts guy too. Dude, this guy's like an arts and crafts guy here. So next time we might feature him on uh, how, to, how, to, how to's. How to's on uh, how to wrap your car, how to make a carbon file, or uh, like what is it, the, the lip, how to make a custom lip from Home Depot, how to make your own little table for a VIP back here. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, I'm done with that. I can do that for so, you guys. Right? So there you go, guys. There it is. Fifty dollars Home Depot stuff. That's including the wine glasses. Right? <laughs> Dollar store right there. <laughs> so it's pretty nice. So as far as the curtains, uh, so the curtains just kind of... They're mostly for show. I, didn't, I cut them literally so right there. Right? Yeah, I stopped them right there. I didn't want them to go any further. I just, like, the thing that, 
the, the pole that sticks out, or the, I mean the slider that sticks out, sticks out like way over here. I say you want to stick your hand out or something, get some little tape. But like I just cut them. So they're more for show? Yeah, they're um, more for show. Most of them, like he said, will slide all the way where you can actually close your curtain. So on this one, he doesn't need the privacy. He doesn't use this for anything else like he has to think. <laughs> so, um, but uh, yeah, cool stuff. Well, awesome. So I'm pretty sure you guys want to take this for a drive and see how, how it handles. So Edgar's going to show us that feature that he was talking about. Um, so so go, go ahead and show us what, what you were talking I'll about. I'll show you guys two cool features. Um, car does have to be locked, so make sure everything's locked. Boom, there it is. Um, so right here, you walk into your car, you can have your key in your pocket. Let's say you have stuff, you're carrying things. All you literally have to do is this, you know, unlock, open it up. It's pretty cool. Nice. Um, another feature I want to show you guys, real quick, you lock it again. Let's say you're like walking up to your car, you're like at a Disney, you're at Walmart or something, you park far away. You want to air out your car, that's what I do. Hold the button on the unlock. Just wait a little bit. Bam. Gangster. So, <laughs> hell yeah. So that's, um. That's pretty handy, like he said, if you're walking up towards your car and it's freaking hot like today, and like he said, he's want to let the hot air out, by the time you sit in, it's not going to be crazy hot. So that's pretty nice, a nice Lexus feature. Uh, I know some other cars have it, but this is nice that this car has it. Now you guys know if you guys are in the market to buy a car like this, that, that's some of the features that it'll come with, right? Yeah. So pretty, pretty cool. Much. Yeah, pretty Factory. Cool. Nice. Yeah. All right, so we're going to take it out for a drive. Let's do it. All right, guys, so we're inside the car. This is probably going to be the, one of the quieter uh, cars that we're going to ever ride in, I think. <laughs> Maybe, who knows? Um, but uh, obviously, you know, as I continue to say, um, the, this car is, it rides really nice, um, very smooth. Um, his brother's behind us. Um, but yeah, we're gonna we're just going to drive it. And obviously, it's not a sport. I mean, it's, it's a little bit of both. It's a sports car and a luxury car. So, but uh, it feels nice. Uh, you know what kind of suspension this thing has? No. Stock. Also, it's a stock suspension? I cut the springs. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what they call that in the automotive uh, world, but... Uh, so you cut the springs, so it still drives... It's, uh, we're going to find out when we get on the road here. Now, see, I don't know if you should have said that till the end. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's just, um, the, the suspension is from Topico, so they come stock like that. So they're really good, like, struts in general. I was going to upgrade to uh, some kind of suspension, but I was like, you know, at the time being, I didn't want to wait, so I just cut it, just kind of see how it rode. And I was like, I never bought suspension. It's been like a year and a half. See, so guys, look at the car behind us. Uh, that's his brother in the car behind us, and the little guy likes to stick its head out. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a V6, so it feels good. Yeah, not too bad. But when you hit the red line, it sounds really cool. Oh, does it? Yeah. <laughs> Overall, guys, uh, you guys saw it. Uh, and, you know, again, the car drives drive nice. It's quiet, smooth. Considering Z cut, you know, considering you cut the springs, it drives really good. Uh, the car doesn't really give you any issues, right? I mean, no issues whatsoever. Pretty reliable. And the reason that I'm struggling, guys, with uh, or I struggled on the video with the uh, size of the engine, stuff like that. Obviously, I don't know my Lexus that well. Uh, the, I guess a good thing I can point out and say is that uh, uh, I don't. I, I sell auto parts, and I don't sell a lot of parts for these cars, which is a good sign. So. Just means that not they don't break very often. It's so reliable. So basically, guys, like I started off just a normal person. I mean, I'm still a normal person. I would consider. It's just you know I like cars and just kind of build it up. Um, uh, I started kind of getting into cars when I was like 15 ish. I bought those, or my dad bought me a Civic. I still have that. I'm still building. That's my project car right there. But um, yeah, no, it's just for the for the love of cars. Like I mean, throughout high school, I didn't really know what I was gonna do. I was like, I don't know, I'll just be a, because I, I do a lot of drawing and stuff like, or I used to. Um, I thought I was just going to be a tattoo artist. I was like, ah, i just do that. And then I, I didn't really see any money into it. I was like, ah, oh, i just do cars. They're going to be around for a long time. I mean, tattoos as well, but I'm not to all you tattoo guys or whatever. No, no hard talk or anything. Just like, I didn't really see myself in that kind of feature, you know? So I just like built up cars, kind of like as my, uh, my gateway of just expanding my life out, you know? 
I mean, honestly, like, I, I think I can see my life, like, expanded a lot further than what it already is. I mean, I got into my career choice, which is working at a dealership, and I went to school for this kind of stuff. Like, what, uh, of what school did you go to? I went to UTI. So would you recommend going to that school? UTI, I mean, if you have no knowledge of cars whatsoever, it's a little hard to pick up because the courses are three weeks long. So basic engines, three weeks, and you get a lot of information in three weeks, which is crammed into you fast. So it's a lot of fast paced learning, you have to keep up with it. Um, I say you'll be like three classes deep into like UTI and then you'll forget the whole course of your first course, whatever the whole class is. <laughs> so, I mean, you have to like really, if you have no knowledge, it's pretty hard, but you, you'll pick up, you'll learn a lot. I'm not saying anything bad about the class, it's just like it's fast learning, it's kind of hard. But I mean, in general, I learned a lot from that school. Um, and that's kind of what got me into the job I am today. In Sacramento? Uh, yeah, I went to the Sacramento UTI. You're, you're lucky because I have one of my friends, uh, Luis, the, you know, the BRZ guys, you, you guys know, uh, uh, what is it, uh, New York um, Fury on Instagram. Um, he went to UTI, but there's no UTI in California or in Sacramento at least. He ended up going to, all the way to Arizona to go to UTI. So yeah, crazy. a little bit more fortunate here. Um, so clo it's closer to us guys. Um, uh, what about being a mechanic? How, how do you like being a mechanic or a technician, uh, whatever the proper term is? Yeah. How, what would you say like the good and cons of if somebody's out there watching this video uh, thinking of, you know, that's what they want to do when they grow up and as a career, uh, why would you suggest it? And, and, and if you do like it, what do you like about it and what don't you like about it? So, I li honestly, I find myself like almost at, a, at a, like a peace working on cars, but that's more towards my general stuff, like my, my personal things and stuff like that. That's when I feel most comfortable. Um, when you're at a dealership, you get the cleanliness, you get the like, okay, so you get you get to see the same cars every day, so you see the same problems, you know what to work on, you know what to look for. This is a common problem for these cars, that kind of thing. So you get faster and faster at working with these cars and you get into a thing called a flat rate, so it's a different kind of pay, almost like commission. Instead of being paid hourly, like oh, eight hours, or like let's say like $15 an hour, um, now you get paid $15 per hour, I would say, per car. It's kind of different, like you get paid so commission. So are you flat rate or what are you? I'm flat rate. So pretty much you can quote, like let's say like you're, into, you're interested in this, uh, this career choice. You, let's say you, uh, you quote three hours for a job. You're so used to doing this job, um, you can do it like in an hour. You still get paid for three hours and throughout the day you'll be stacking more and more hours and then you could be like looking up to like 15, 18 hours in a day, 20 hours if you're good. Um, so that's pretty cool. I mean for one day you get paid for about half a work week. So you guys hear yeah. that? He recommends a flat rate instead of hourly. Now once you get good, yeah. That's, if you're, if you're good. Better, yeah. If you're not good, then maybe so. Just stick to hourly for a little bit until you get the hang of things, you know? Uh, so what got you into cars? Um, growing up, my dad was always into cars. And he was always fixing them, and I was kind of was always kind of interested in that kind of stuff. I was always helping him. I wasn't helping him much. I was young. I was like handing him tools and stuff like that. Always, I was always around the scenery, and then I kind of when I got my first car, I started looking more into it. Like, oh, Honda this, Honda that, imports. But I was always a classic guy. I was always around that scene too. So my dream car, honestly, is a, like a '64, '63 Impala, somewhere around that. Nice. So I really, I'm into classics. So I was just always around imports, you know, and like Asian vehicles and stuff like that. So I just kind of stuck to it and just kind of built up. I got, I, I learned a lot from the community and, you know, just learned a lot from people in general. Like I got to meet a lot of cool people, um, just doing this. So it's pretty cool. Most of my friends are car-related, like scenarios that I, how I met them and stuff. It's pretty cool. We had a good time making this vlog. Uh, super, you know, nice, comfortable, quiet ride. Sporty but luxury. Um, you know, kind of a nice build. He spent a decent amount of money, but also some budget parts on it. Um, if you guys have questions or anything, what's your Instagram again? EK Edgar. So EK Edgar? It's underscore after the EK. So EK okay. underscore Edgar. And I'll post it on there for you guys yeah. just to make it easy. Um, again, thank you for coming out here. I hope you guys like these vlogs. Um, um, and then just keep it going. Let's keep this car community here in Reno. Uh, you know, let's keep this thing going. I guess it's people like this, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So thanks for coming, dude. For sure, thank you. So, I see some girls on this next one. Any car girls out here? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. That's yeah, a good point. So uh, the one of the things that we haven't featured on this on this uh, vlogs uh, is a girl, a car girl. If you guys know a car girl or, or out there that wants to be uh, uh, you know featured on one of the videos, let us know. Uh, so we can put her out here and uh, just kind of get their point of view, right? So, cool. Thanks for bringing that up and uh, take it easy, man. Um, I appreciate it.